Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. You thought it was going to be a quiet international break. At least I was like, oh bloody hell, we've got England in the Nations League. Normally you get excited about Ireland, but it's a glorified friendly, alright? It doesn't really matter, I don't care about it, but no. Chelsea Football Club are in the headlines again. And this is quite a big deal. What we're going to talk about today is very serious. It could actually end up being a good thing. And that's why I want you to stay around during this video. Because as much as the top line is not what you want to be hearing after another transfer window, Chelsea have just spent a load of money again. It should all be about the football. We've got a new manager. Time to get behind the team, right? That's what we wanted. That's what we're all here for. But no, the owners, we're looking and talking about one buying out the other. One isn't happy. Both aren't happy. What is going on? And what I want to do today is try and give you the big picture. This comes out from Bloomberg, which is an American news outlet. There's a paywall behind it. I'm not going to read the whole thing out because it's just a bit boring and pointless if you want to read the whole article. I suggest you go and get it. I'll put a few screenshots up on the screen. But to give added context, I want to take you back to a couple of years ago where David Ornstein, one of football's most reputable journalists, said this. Chelsea are actually two windows into a four-window strategy. So we're being told to wait until the 1st of September 2024 to really judge this new regime around recruitment, which is being led by Lawrence Stewart and Paul Wynn Stanley, the sporting directors. Maurizio Pochettino will input into that, but he won't have any kind of increased influence in January. The likelihood is... It was the same for Enzo Maresca, although I do think there will have been little tweaks here when it comes to recruitment strategy. Are we going to listen to the manager? Does the manager have a say? Under Pochettino, they were learning on the job. The answer was probably a resounding no. And I think with Maresca, there definitely was a, well, what do you think we should do? Because we've bought these players for Pochettino and we've clearly not done a very good job because we literally only had about a month of the season that was good. Maresca comes in, and now we're at a new start. The fact of the matter is, I think this would have been quite different if we'd have signed Victor Rossiman. And I think in terms of like the top line of what we're led to believe about, let's say, Todd Bowley, he's not actually one of the main shareholders. I think Bowley's only got about between 10 and 15%. Bedad Bali is one of the main guys at Clear Lake Capital who own over 60% of the shares of Chelsea Football Club. So as much as a lot of people believe that it's Todd Bowley, Todd Bowley, because he was the one kind of in the face in front of the cameras, in the driving seat of like doing media and stuff right at the start. And then he took himself out of certain roles because there was just a big mess that was made and certain people shouldn't be involved in sporting decisions. And it's why Chelsea have done extensive work to try and build a sporting structure at the club. Now, as much as I don't think any of these people so far have really shone that well, and I don't think any of the things that we have done so far can be seen as great stuff, Chelsea are making progress here, apart from the fact that we've managed to somehow get our wage bill down from these astronomical numbers down to the bottom, this wasn't all because of Roman Abramovich. The new owners came in and threw hundreds of thousands at Koulibaly, hundreds of thousands at Sterling. It's only now based on this trial and error, which you really don't hope your club is the guinea pig of trial and error when it comes to American businessmen dealing with a football club. But the fact of the matter is, they've come in, they've realised that they can't do that anymore, and they're trying to change it. I, for one, understand this, and I think it's a good thing in terms of the long-term success of Chelsea. But at the same time, if we're led to believe that Bowley wanted kind of this Galactico Chelsea, a bit like Roman in a way where we sign the best players, we get the elite stars and we win trophies. But Adig Bali was very much more on the business side of things where it was about slowing it down, not throwing the stupid money out, buying a young team for the future. And I think the bit that's gone missing here is that the correct answer was somewhere in between those things. It wasn't, let's just go and spend loads of money on Galacticos and then deal with transfer bans when they come. And it also wasn't, let's just go out there and buy a load of 18-year-olds from Brazil, have a few shit years and deal with it later and hopefully these players are going to be the best in the world. That's not how football works. There is that famous line from Alan Hansen that you can't win anything with kids. And as much as I don't think that is fully true, 
I absolutely think that Chelsea overall, when it comes to judging the team, which is what Ornstein has said here, judge after the fourth transfer window. We've had that now. And the fact of the matter is we've got to see what happens this season now to know if those four transfer windows were a success. If Chelsea managed to get themselves back into the Champions League football next season, come the end of this season, then I think we're going in the right direction. The issue here is that if there is conflict above playing level at the club, A, it needs to be resolved pretty soon. B, the question is here, who is the one that's actually trying to get rid of their shares? And I think it's Todd Bowley. I think Todd Bowley is looking at this recruitment that we've done, seeing that predominantly we've gone with the youngsters. We have gone with the young squad for the future, not necessarily the Galacticos. We've made some great signings. Don't get me wrong. I think a lot of people get shrouded around the mist of like, Chelsea have only bought kids. Chelsea have only bought kids. We've bought some great players too. And you wouldn't say that Cole Palmer, as young as he is, you don't call him a kid because he's doing so well. So I think at this point in time, we're actually dealing with something here which could end up working in Chelsea's favour. The more shareholders that you've got, and by default then the more stakeholders that have a say in decisions at the club, the more people you've got to please, the more likely conflict is to happen. And at the same time, when it comes to a lack of conviction in decisions and the way that the club are operating, because there's so many voices going on at board level, some people want this, some people want that. No wonder we don't end up getting what we actually need. No wonder we don't end up getting what we actually want. And I think a massive issue that has come since these new owners have come in is that we as fans were told that we were going to be in the loop of everything, there was going to be direct communication. Why are so many of us still sat confused, wondering what the strategy is, wondering where we are in terms of this plan? And when we see Bloomberg writing articles about we Todd Bowley potentially might get bought out, we're sitting here thinking, hang on a minute, is he the good guy? Are they the good? Who is, what, what's going on? What is going on? And obviously, throughout time, we're going to get some clarity on this situation. But I think the reality is, whatever way this goes, having less people involved at the top is going to be good for Chelsea. Look at Roman Abramovich. What we had was a man that absolutely adored football and his only goal wasn't about finance, 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 finance. Yes, when he came in, there were less restrictions on finances. There wasn't your PSRs to worry about, but... Roman Abramovich blessed us. We were so lucky to have an owner who only cared about winning. And now it's a bit different. And I don't necessarily just want to come on here and bash the owners, but I also don't want to just let them off the hook. Because the reality of the situation is, from my side, the fact that they have constantly had this back and forth, we've heard about a deterioration in relationship between Egbali and Bowley for a while. And as much as their respective parties are going to come out in the media and deny it, because, well, it's the easiest thing to do, isn't it? The fact of the matter is, you look at the business that Chelsea have done, and it does look crazy. It does look a bit stupid, and it looks wild, and it doesn't really look like something that is a really conclusive plan. You can't iron it out and say, yeah, I totally get what we're doing. I get certain bits and pieces of it, but look at the amount of players that we've bought in. And look at the way that we are still not in the Champions League. We're competing in, in, in games in Kazakhstan because it's been slow. And because we have been so drastic in the way that we've changed things, sometimes you've got to make a change and do everything at once. And then it's like, ah, it's like a reset. But sometimes you don't just throw everything that was good and that worked out of the pan and then expect the results to be great. This is a football club. This isn't about flipping pensions. This is a proper English football club with sole heritage and a history, particularly recent, of success. That's the part that's disappeared from Chelsea. That is the part that, as fans, we are desperate to see return at the closest given opportunity. And I'm hoping that whatever the, the outcome is of this, Bowley maybe wants to sell his shares, Clear Lake don't want to give up their shares... Okay, fine. I don't know if it is Bedadig Bali who's been the good guy, Boli the good guy. Is it? They're all just bad. We don't know yet. And I bring it back to what Ornstein has said. They spent a lot of money. Like, we get excited about transfers because it's exciting 
to get to look at players that could potentially play for your club. You watch the highlight reels, you're like, damn, Joao Felix, bro, like he's gonna play for Chelsea. Like, it's cool, it's fun. But at the same time, like, what's the plan? Paul Wynn Stanley, Lawrence Stewart, these guys flying in their jets to Naples and not coming back with Osimen. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of question marks over what these owners have done. And question marks continue to raise when some of these shareholders are now looking to sell within less than three years of taking over at the club. We were led to believe that it was going to be up to 10 years before they were allowed to sell anything to do with Chelsea. Yes, they've invested heavily in the playing personnel, but there was also supposedly a lot of talks that have been going on for years about building a new stadium or at least increasing the capacity of Stamford Bridge. And all of these people that we're discussing here, they're all businessmen predominantly. This isn't Roman Abramovich, super rich, load of Russian oil money, loves football, wants to win. This isn't that Chelsea anymore. We've got to kind of just accept that as hard as it is. And trust me, trust me, I'd still love it if Roman was our owner. I think pretty much everyone would based on what we've seen in the past three years. But the fact of the matter is that isn't what's happened. There are things outside of our control that have meant that this is no longer a Roman Abramovich club. And I think what we've got to do now is make sure that there is just literally one or two people that are making these decisions. Yes, we're not talking about like buying a steak or buying a tuna loin. We're talking about hundreds of millions of pounds every month in turnover going in and out of Chelsea. Big wages, this, like incoming money for this. Like what's going on with the front and shirt sponsorship? Sort it out. At the end of the day, Enzo Maresca isn't the one that we should be piling the heat on after three matches and we've actually played quite well in them. Absolutely not. What is going on above Enzo Maresca and the players should be dealt with separately. And to be quite honest, the reality is it's a bit of a shambles. We need to just iron everything out. And after two and a half years, if someone don't want to be involved anymore, yes, there's legalities here that might come into play. And I'm not going to sit here and say I want it to be him or I want it to be him because I don't know enough about what's going on. We're all in the dark really here about what's actually happening. I think what we're led to believe is Bedadeg Bali is one of the main like executors of decisions and like he gets the final say. And like I said earlier, Todd Bowley was just the guy put in front of the media basically at the start. And then even he's kind of retracted in the role because he, he knew that he was out of his depth. So this is a mess. It's a mess that I think will end up with a positive conclusion. And that conclusion is the less people working upstairs, the easier it is to just get things done, iron it out, and then hopefully the play can do the talking on the pitch. I still back the team. I think we've got a great squad. I think we've got a good manager. And I think we're going we're gonna to finish in the top four this season. That's where I am with it right now. But to hear all of this, sort it out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. See you next time.